Well, hello and happy Saturday to you. Hopefully you're getting ready for a great Mother's Day weekend with your family. I'm getting ready for my son and uh, his uh, nice, beautiful fiance to walk through my door in just a moment. I started these lamps on Tuesday with you and uh, they've changed a bit since you saw them last. I had put on a couple of coats of Monarchy and painted them as a base coat with our color Naples. Well, I've decided I didn't like those too good. So that's the beautiful thing about paint. You can always go back to plan B and even if you don't have a plan, you can come up with a plan. So I used my beautiful tassel as an inspiration and this is probably not everyone's cup of tea, but bear with me because I wanna show you this great space that these go in once we finish up. Say hello as you come on. Well, hello, uh, who I have? Marcy, Marcia, Marcia. Sorry, I have no glasses on. And uh, Taddy, 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 is there an L in there? Taddy, Marcia, Taddy. I can see it now if I keep focusing, my eyes will finally come. <laughs> They'll finally come in. <laughs> They're a little bit uh, strained this afternoon, I do believe. No contacts. I don't wear contacts. I wear glasses, so I should get some contacts. I should succumb to the idea that these eyes are not getting any better, wouldn't you think? I've just had them on all day and just don't want to wear them anymore. I can see the big picture, just not the little stuff. So sorry if I mispronounced your name. I do apologize. All right, guys, I want to show you this technique that I'm going to do. It's not really a technique as much as it is just playing with paint and coming up with something that works. And that's exactly what I did. And I just kind of started and let it evolve. I always say, let pieces speak to me. And uh, as I started painting this, you know, I, I put on something and sat and look at, and just look at it for a minute. And I said, you know, I think Regal is the color that's not going to bounce off the walls up there. The walls are kind of a golden color and they're very much in keeping with this uh, color that's in here, kind of this brownish gold. That's kind of the wall color. It looks like it's a uh, metallic gold here, but it's really not. And uh, with that, I said, what's gonna, not going to bounce off the wall? I don't want it to look comical. I don't want it to look um, crazy when you walk in the room. And I don't want it to be the first thing you see. I want you to discover this as you're sitting in the room. You go, wow, those lamps really look great with this rug. You know, it's all kind of about that rug because it does jump off the floor. It's a white background and it has all of these fun colors of paint splashes of all things kind of thrown into that rug. They're, they're in the wool. It's not anything I did to the rug. I wish I could because so many of you ask about getting that rug. Uh, so I used the beautiful color Regal over my once messy uh, red-yellow combo. And I thought that was gonna be pretty, but the colors just were too sheer. They looked pink. So it um, wasn't what I was looking for. So plan B, reeling back, taking that as my inspiration. And you know, I get inspired late at night. And I know a lot of you guys do too. After everybody goes to bed, I sit and look at something for a little bit and I left these sitting on my counter in the red yellow thing. And I thought, all right, that's not it. What is going to do the trick? So again, thinking of the base color, I got that out, got that done. So I did the base color. And then I was thinking, what other color do these represent the most? And what color is in that rug the most? And it would be green in that room. I used some other things that were green. So pulling in the green out was great. But, it, but to me, and I know to you, green and burgundy and red are Christmas. So it's the first thing I thought, I don't want Christmas looking lamps. So what's gonna take that away? Adding in a bright yellow. So there again, there's no yellow generally at Christmas. You just don't see this intense yellow at Christmas. So I thought that'll tone the yellow, that will tone the Christmas away, much like this little tassel has. In that room, it doesn't feel Christmassy at all. So that's what I was aiming for. And um, before I go too far, I gotta show you guys something. Do y'all do Etsy? Do you look at Etsy at all? Uh, it's one of those websites that I love because I'm creative and I know many of you are just the same. I like Etsy, uh, but I forget about Etsy. So I loaded the Etsy app on my phone some time ago and I needed a door hanger. You know, I painted the outside of this house and I had all these ideas that I was gonna make my own and that never has happened yet. So. Uh, I realize I'm not gonna make one, but I gotta share with you because the cat's really enjoying this already. Oh, she's at it again. Wow, this little tyrant of a cat, I'm gonna have to start putting her away. She's just getting too excited. But I gotta show you this because I know many of you guys are gonna love this little door hanger, but it looks like the umbrella type. And it, and, and I had saw this, but I hadn't quite seen it made up. You know, I painted my house white and it's got black trim and it has the red windows. And when I found this, I was like, I gotta show you girls this. I knew you would love it. And this is an Etsy seller. So uh, if you're interested, you can find these. And I forgot what I, sh I think I was looking for umbrella. So search for the word umbrella door hanger because that was the original thing I was looking for. And this popped up and I just couldn't love it more. So I think you guys would like it too. And uh, I'm gonna get my son to hang it from some fishing line until I get a beautiful ribbon that will pick up this black here 
and hang it from the door because the hook is too tall to hang it from. But isn't that the prettiest door hanger? It wasn't cheap, but when you get something pretty like this, it's worth spending the money on because it is, um, it, it's something that I will adore. Every time I look at that door, I'm gonna love this. So certain times in life, it's worth just going for it and getting something that you really love and makes you smile when you see it. So it says home sweet home to me. Well, let me see if I can get my phone to stop flaring up there. Um, so get right into painting these lamps. So I'm leaving this one here so you can see where I'm headed and uh, that you don't think I'm totally losing it here. And I'm gonna put them in the room and show you what they look like in that room. So here's all I did, painted the base coat. And then I looked at it and I said, all right, what needs to be yellow? What needs to be green? What needs to, so my little handy dandy brushes I often use, painting from the lid takes no paint literally and just start cutting it in. This is two coats that I did on the yellow, two coats I did on the red, and or on the uh, green, and then I let it sit just for a few minutes and antiqued it, and pulled it back with a dry rag. Did a, basically, um, just gave it a good distress with a dry rag. So that's gonna let you pull back and get that real rough looking texture on there. And that's exactly what I wanted it to have, a very artisan look to it. So that gives it that. If everything's perfect and you paint it, it's all so perfectly painted, I think it cheapens it and gives it like a, well, it just came that way or something. I'd rather it have a little bit of personality and I believe doing that will help you get that, giving it a distressed look, a little more artsy. Plus it also toned down the brightness and then I used the Vintage Brown Antiquing Gel over the top of that. If you are new to our page, guys, say you are, and I'm gonna send you a link to get yourself one of these free samples. And also these colors that I'm using, I see someone ask already, what is this yellow? This green and this yellow, both of these intense colors are from Color Club. It's our monthly color club that is a surprise. And uh, it's not always a color you're gonna love, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> But it's going to be one you can't get ever again because it's uh, only available to the color club members. And uh, it's a color that, like this, you keep it around, you're going to find something that eventually that you'll use it for. Probably, I never thought about using this yellow. People wanted an intense yellow all the time, so here it is. But as you can see, you get some different looks out of it than you would even anticipate because this doesn't look like that once you antique it or even put the whitewash over it. You can come up with such pretty things using these same colors, just using the antiquing gels to intensify them. So the next rung I painted was this guy here. And uh, just using again the lid, just going right down through there, my little brush. Take your hand and just go. Now, if you get out of the lines, no big deal. Let the brush do the work. You just kind of guide it along. And uh, we're gonna go back over it again, put on second coat. While it's drying, we'll do the green. And again, you're gonna wipe most of it off, so it doesn't have to be perfection here. We just want it to kind of hang in there as we get as we get it going. Are you guys doing anything special with your family over this Mother's Day weekend? I know it's a little different uh, being kind of cap captured at home. We're ordering out back to go. <laughs> We've had a couple meals from uh, steakhouses and things here that more sit down dinner places that I hate to say it, but it was a little bit disappointing. And I know it is eating something, even transferring it over to a plate and trying to warm it up. Nothing's ever the same. Y'all have this having the same experience. We're trying to do business with restaurants that are around local that we go to just so these guys don't have such a hard time to make it, you know? And uh, Longhorn was one that we, we like here that's near us, that Craig and I eat at often. And uh, we've had a couple carry out meals from there during this. And it's uh, definitely not the same experience. But hey, it, I thought they did great for what it is. You know, eating out of a plastic dish or whatever and trying to heat stuff up. Everything just changes texture, it's not the same. Oh, I can't wait for things to get, my Mother's Day gift is for things to get back to normal, I'm a prey, and what about you all? Just hoping it can just get over for everyone. So we can go back to uh, having a little bit of normalcy with family, friends, and so on. 
Okay, so that got that one. Now the next layer I did was on this next row on the base here. If you're seeing those and they're in your way, just give it a swipe, the comments. You can swipe it off with your finger on your phone. It's something you have to do on your end. Sorry I have to say that every time I see people comment and you can't see. Um, all right, so get this one going. And I do need a bigger brush, but hey, we're getting it done. We're getting it done. Of course, this takes no paint to do this. Very, very little paint. And this is me wanting to stipple here, you know, stippling. But again, I'm not after coverage, so I'm just trying to get on some paint. So Emily and Brady will be able to see these lamps up there in the room when they get here. If not, they don't have any. <laughs> they don't have a lamp until I get these back to their house, into their uh, space there. Okay, so that got that. Now I'm gonna bounce over and do the green. No need to even wash the brush, not enough hairs here to worry. Just rub it off on your rag. And the next one, we're gonna jump down to this little level and paint that one. I hope I'm in your camera, in your view here. This covers really well. Yellows by nature don't cover so easily, but this one actually covers well, but uh, Yellow is a form of a white, and it doesn't have that much hide to it. But it will cover pretty good on this second round. But nothing like this green, that is a fact. If you have questions, guys, please ask them here. Do my best to get back to you. And if you want a free sample, also comment for that too. So I can send you a link, or whoever's here can send a link along. Thank you for the stars, guys. I see somebody giving me stars. That always thrills me. I don't know why that thrills me so much, but it does. <laughs> oh, I have 250 stars. Uh, making, making all kinds of bank here. There again, I don't know who's getting them, but we got some. Okay. So there's that. So the next row I did was down to this one. So see the, how... This really looks like, ee, when I was painting it, I thought this looks like a Mexican restaurant. Does it bring that out in your mind too? Every time I look at it, that's the colors any Mexican restaurant you go into, they use these very festive colors, but unfortunately they're in my rug, so that's why we're using them. We are doing that. Now, you can paint your lamps any way you want with this method and with this, what I'm gonna do with this in just a minute. So the fun does, the fun do, does begin here in just a minute. Just bear with me to get through this part right here. Now, something else, when I painted this base coat or this regal over this here, I stippled this and I'll tell you why. I wanted the base to shine through and you can see it's not perfect. And I wanted that kind of modeling to come through. Again, I don't want it to look just perfection. And I wanted those two tone layers to show a little. I left that stippling marks in there so you can see a little light underneath because when I antique it, it's going to tone it all and it's going to look very much meant to be. So there's another little, it's something when you're up close to the piece. Now it's never going to be noticed from afar, but when you're up close, you're definitely going to be seeing all that there. We'll see, oh, that's got a lot of texture and pretty in that, you know. This really won't require a second coat. I did do a second coat on this other one, but I don't know that I'm going to have to. Here, I do the base. I probably did this, I don't know. I just sat here one night and I said, all right, I'm gonna paint that thing. I think I got the idea now. And it just came, you know, it just was one of those things. It just kind of came to me. All right, so uh, let's get the base. And can you see that? You probably can't. I'm not used to working with this side of my camera to the, this side of me. Okay. So just put her on there any way you can get it. I'm trying to keep it off that lower ring. 
And I actually painted the base base too with this green. We don't name these colors from the Color Club because they're not anything you can order again. If you're in Color Club, you pick a your if you want the uh, pint or the quart, you pick the size that you want each month. It's twenty-seven dollars for the pint, and that includes your shipping. And it's thirty-two for the quart, and that includes your shipping. This month was a gorgeous color, and uh, if you guys are in Color Club, you should be seeing your product arriving. I'm gonna say the next day or two as it has been shipped. All right, so let's get this on. Now what we're doing is we're allowing this to set up and dry just a little bit. I don't wanna rub it all off. I wanna give it a minute so I can get some of it to hang on. So I'm just trying to give it a, that old world look to it. Like it's been sitting out and abused like this was an old finial or an old column somewhere. Maybe even in Mexico. <laughs> it could have been. That would be beautiful. Mexico is a very artistic place. Okay, get this one going. So I am gonna go over the yellow one more round, <clears throat> but I'm not gonna go over the green anymore. And then we're gonna remove. So just bear with me. We're just a few minutes away from the fun and it will move real quick after that. Real quick. So again, you could do this with any of your pieces at home. You can do this with your decorative accessories. You could do this with your lamps. Whatever it is that you wanna change the color of, this is a great little easy process to do to give them a uniqueness. You could work with tone on tone. You could work with all two shades of white, three shades of white, the antiquing gel. You can also work with dark colors. You could do a black and a gray and maybe a lighter shade and then put whitewash over it. it would be absolutely beautiful depending on where you're going, what you're doing with it, what, if you, what kind of room you're trying to put it in. You could also add the antiquing gel in the brown over the grays to give them more of a wood feel. Or if you want that beachy or that farmhouse feel, you add the whitewash over that. So those antiquing gels um, are pretty amazing. So a quick question for you. Um, if you were able to buy four of the antiquing gels in a set, would you be interested in a set of four of those? I'll just ask the big blanket question here, not that it's ready to go, but we can do that and we may do that very soon. Once we get caught up from all of this uh, kind of the whirlwind that's going on as we speak. Is that something somebody would like? Oh, I see a little, I see a little bit of love going there. I think it would be a great way for people to have them all and experiment with them all and have a little savings to get all four of them. And I'll put on a little more yellow, and then we're going to go for it, all right? Not a lot, just a little. I'm not going to be perfect with it, just a little layer more. Because if I don't, it won't look like my other one, because that's what I did over there. I'm afraid to not. I guess I can control what I take off, but we'll be safe and sorry here. Okay, so two coats really does the deal for the yellow. You know, I say you guys comment about uh, painting and so on all the time about my skills, but let me tell you what, I, what separates the herd here is people who use paint often aren't scared of paint, and I encourage each of you to do that. Not be scared of it because Anything you do is reversible. Everything you do is reversible in the paint world. So that's the greatest tool in the world is because you can, at the finger, at your fingertips, change anything that you don't like. So when you're in a panic about painting, um, there's absolutely no reason to be. The biggest hurdle is to just start. Start, just do it. Just pull the trigger and don't sit around wondering if you're gonna mess something up. Because I always say this, and I'll say it a thousand times before I kick off here, is the biggest loss is not doing something. Sitting in there and wondering what you're gonna destroy or mess up, that's the loss, not doing something. So go do it, and then if, uh, if it was just heinous and you had to hide it in a closet, that's okay too. 
But the best thing to know is anytime you make a boo-boo, anytime you make something that's ugly, just like I did here with these lamps, the best lesson learned here is that it was just a, a matter of adding another coat over it to come to something that I love and something that works. First one, total loss, total fiasco, total uh, no way for me to make that work in that room that I could see. It just did not look like I had in my mind. It just, the two colors together, probably because I painted them one too wet, but um, the red was just too clear for that room. It would, they would have stood out like a neon sign. So that was not what I wanted. I could have antiqued it probably and gotten somewhere with it, but I thought, why do I need to chance it when this is the color? So that's how it ended up with this. Sometimes to me, design is the process of elimination. Sometimes it's not always clear what the choice is, but it's clear what the choice isn't. Does that make sense to you? I always start on that sometimes. I start deducting, kind of like when you're trying to decide with your family what you want to eat, and you say, hey, son, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Everybody says, well, I don't want that. I had chicken for dinner. I don't want that. I had this for that. But once you start eliminating, then it's obvious that, oh, the only thing left is spaghetti. I mean, it's kind of the same mentality when you're designing something, same way. Use that same process of elimination. And that's sometimes the easiest way to formulate a great plan. Like if you know what you don't want, it's easy to assess what you might be able, what might be your real and clear option. That's a great way, it's a great way I do it. You know, I just kind of run through my mind here when I was trying to figure out what I was gonna to do to these lamps. I was like, well, I could add blue. There's blue in there, but it's very faint. If I add blue, will that play up blue in the room? Nope, because there's not enough other blue in the room to make blue look like it should have been the choice. There's some other green, so that's why green came up. But I did think about adding blue, and then I thought, no, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of ran through those options in my mind. Well, that would work. I know there's blue in there, but you gotta look way too hard to see blue. So then I kick that one out. Just kind of the same thing, go through the whole little scenario. So this is really wet, and I've got on enough that I'm gonna stop right there. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna take my dirty rag that I often use here, and I keep rinsing this out. So you can, and I see a lot of folks ask that question, can you reuse your rags and so on? I just go right to the sink, and with hot water and Dawn, wash this out and then let it dry. And then therefore I still have, I still can use it without being, I, I'm frugal, you know, I'm very frugal. And I don't like to throw a good rag out because hey, I'm gonna need another one that I'm gonna ruin. So these are wash rags that we've had and used here at home. And then finally when they just start looking too bad, then they hit, they go to the rag use, the pile to use for rags. So that's where we're at here with this one. So I'm gonna keep it around as long as I can because it's a good size, I like it. So now, dry rag, I'm gonna begin to remove this. So here goes the fun. Now, I'm gonna also be careful not to rub that yellow back on all over it. So just kind of look at that one. And since you can't see it for the shade, I'm gonna tell you that it's looking pretty good right there, okay? Now the green, it's on there and it dries pretty quick. So I'm gonna rub it a little harder maybe to get it to come off. So this is the fun part, guys. Just stay right here with me and see what I can get to come off there to reveal that pretty regal underneath. And same here, I'm gonna keep my rag in line. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going up and down because that will smear the yellow to the green and kind of make a mess. I'm kind of moving around in a, keeping my rag kind of stationary in one line. Now, I'll make some messes. Just take your rag and wipe it off so you don't get that bleed. Flip your rag as you go and keep it clean. And I didn't like that little area that I got on there. Give that a little fat lip. And so just kind of be watching what you're doing. And making a match as much as possible. already been begun to try to dry and start to stick so as you know if you're gonna do any uh, antiquing with this or wet distressing you gotta work quick you gotta work pretty darn fast all right so let's get the base same thing goes there I'm gonna take the yellow off first because it seems to be the wetter of the two and then uh, I'm gonna do the base I took off a lot of that 
around the edge so that would really have a lot of red on top show through we'll see and then work on those edges Anything that gives you that nice sharp edge where you can see that other color underneath is a great place to just kind of use the side of your rag, pull back and use it almost like a little piece of sanding paper. If you want more to come off, obviously you can wet this rag, but now I like, I like working with it dry because I'm gonna antique this just as soon as we finish here. So I'm gonna keep it pretty dry so I don't muddy it all up. And then, uh, Sharpen those little edges up, go right around there. That brings out such pretty detail. It's almost like outlining a picture. You know, when you were a kid and you used to color and you'd color your uh, pictures and you were the good colorers. I remember being a good color. I'd outline. My sister didn't like to outline. I'd outline, I learned how to shade. Did y'all remember doing that? Remember how to outline when you're coloring? Many of you have children, I'm sure you're teaching them the color and tricks of the world is how to outline. That was a good one. <laughs> I hadn't thought about outline and doing coloring in years because I didn't have a daughter. I have uh, only one son. He wasn't much into coloring. <laughs> he was a little bit, but nothing like I was. Okay. All right, so there we go. So this is pretty much a match to this one. Now, I'm gonna tone it down. So the magic is in this little jar right here, in this, in my brown. And I just wanna show you this because I did my fireplace with this, or my, I don't know how you want to call that about the fireplace. I did the whole thing pretty much, and I've done two or three projects with this, and y'all saw me even something as big as that fountain out there, I'm only down to right there. And of course it ain't full when you get it, you know, it's always about right in here. So I've only used this much doing that entire fireplace. I'm gonna never say it right, fountain. And I don't know how many other projects that I've done. So this stuff goes a long way. You never probably ever need this size unless you're gonna do a lot of projects or you just wanna have it around. So uh, the only brush that I'm gonna use is this cheap chip brush because my other brushes are not in here, my Syntex. So I'm gonna just put it on with this and the same rag is gonna continue to wipe it off. And we're going to go right for it, go right for the gusto here. I'm going to work in small sections. I'm going to push this lamp because I don't want those spatters on my little lamp. Just push it right up into the metal. And I'm going to work in the top row at a time, pushing it right into all the ridges. Now, remember what I said about all that? Always get down in the little grooves. That's the fun and beauty of it. I'm going to go right in here, do the same. I'll do this upper neck first, and then I'll move down to the other piece. So you wanna get up under there really well. You wanna let some of that hang out under there. So it's almost like it's uh, gotten dirty and somebody tried to wipe it and clean it, but they didn't get under there really good. That's kind of the idea. <clears throat> so let that be where some of that will linger. Push, 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 push right down in there. Now, to take it off the same way, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna roll that rag right around in a circle almost, right around there, just doing that. That makes it easy. And looking over at my lamp to make sure that I've left on similar. It's gonna be hard to make them perfect. And just rub it right underneath so we don't have a blob. Same here, toning that green. Now, I don't know how obvious it is to you on your side of things. I can see a huge difference. So let's just get this whole upper part now. From there down, right down to here. Easier to see it in sections than it is to try to, try to do a side to side deal. <clears throat> just get the whole round body at once. See this little bright, intense yellow edge here? We'll run right in there and run over that so we don't have that brightness coming out. I could do this all day. I never tire of antiquing. There's something about the magic of rubbing it off that uh, thrills my little soul. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. I don't know why, there's just something about it. 
I know y'all heard me talk about um, back when I was a kid, my mother had a furniture store and had all the name brand furniture in the world in her store. But she continued to go all through the years to auctions and she loved old things and auctions. And I hated them, you know, as kids, you don't, kids don't like auctions. <clears throat> but she got, would go anyway, but she'd never take home new furniture. She would buy furniture at the auction and she would paint her furniture in these kits. And the, gosh, y'all probably remember this. I am 50, 57, 58, whatever I am. And I was probably 10. So you're talking about how many years ago? A long time ago, 40 plus years ago, there were these antiquing kits and there were blue that he put this gel on. There was a, like a, our color Crete. I hmm, wonder where that came from. And those colors and then this antiquing that smelled horrendous. It was a urethane. I remember you could smell that stuff. It would permeate the house. It was horrible. But I remember her doing those pieces and I was like, why do you do that, Mom? Please bring home new furniture. And she would never bring home new furniture. She did that. She painted it. And then... <laughs> when I think about that, you know, and you go, well, those pieces, um, just, well, to have them would be great. To have them, um, anyway, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> it is Mother's Day, so but a great memory for of her. She was just uh, amazingly creative. And I thought at that time that how stupid that was, you know? Isn't it funny what you think back and you go, oh, what I know now, you know? This, what I, I thought she had bad taste, you know, how your daughters are and can be critics of their mother and vice versa even. But you look back and go, she had great taste. <laughs> Just too stupid to know better at the time. So here I am, what, 45 years later, showing you how to antique. <laughs> it's the circle of life. Isn't it? Okay, so there we go. There it is. matching pretty good. Okay, one last thing. We gotta get our little finial here and antique it. See that one? Just tone him down just a little. I think it looks pretty much like it. Pretty darn close. What do you think? Okay. Set them side to side here so you can see. Pretty close. Not bad. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any fellas on here, uh, thank you so much for watching. And again, if you would like to get yourself a free sample this size right here, this little guy right here, it's a $16.99 value, and we'll send that out to you for $6.99. And that's the shipping that you're paying, actually. It's a little under the shipping. We'll pay the rest to get it to you and let you try it for yourself at home and see what you think about using these paints that don't require you to do any sanding 
or anything other than just simply maybe get your piece clean. You can use Iron Deglosser to do that and that will ensure that you have a good bond and you don't have any grease or oils on your surface and paint this little product on right here and you're gonna get beautiful results. Even if you don't know how to paint, you're gonna get some results that you're gonna be quite proud of, I do believe. So I look forward to seeing your projects here and if you'd like to be a member of our group, I'm gonna send you that link that'll get you the free sample and also help you get right into our group so you can see all the other amazing people who are using this product and getting great results doing some things that you will be shocked to see because there are just some things that'll blow you away. And uh, all right. I'll take these up and put them in their new home and uh, get them all lit up and take a photo so you can see what they look like in this fun little room that they're in. And I hope you have a great Mother's Day with your family. See you later. Bye.